Right now, the Badgers are celebrating after their first big win of the season. We break down the game and their new era. But the Badgers aren't the only ones celebrating. Find out why this former lineman is taking a knee and flashing a ring. And we're looking at a Madison tradition making some good food for an even better cause on Capitol Square. That's all coming up right now at 10. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jalen Banks. This weekend is a scorcher, so let's get a look at your first one forecast with meteorologist Alex Harrington. Yeah, Jalen and friends got the red glasses on because we're tracking alert day conditions across all of southern Wisconsin. Things are going to be cranking up temperature wise over the course of the next 24 hours. It was warm today in the upper 80s to near 90. But as we go on into your Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the Labor Day time frame, temperatures record or near records could be seeing the heat index values really start to inch up there, especially as we get towards the Tuesday time frame as the humidity starts to crank up. But we've got breezy conditions out here right now. We'll have breezy conditions on your Sunday. And with relatively low humidity levels, we're going to be looking at a uh, fire risk that's really pretty up there. Look at these temperatures, 10, 15, 20 degrees warmer than where we were just at this point. Yesterday, temperatures hanging around to around 80 degrees, still as warm as 84 right now feeling in La Crosse right now. And again, high temperatures tomorrow. This is what we're up against, folks. Middle to upper 90s, and we'll be talking about the fire risk coming up in Maine weather. And with that fire risk with the heat this weekend, the Wisconsin DNR has a few things they'd like you to keep in mind. They ask that you avoid any burning, including campfires because of hot, dry, and windy conditions, which could spark a wildfire, even turning a small bonfire out of control. If you plan to spend time outside, be mindful of any off-road vehicles and other equipment which could drag chains and cause a spark. Fire crews have responded to 10 different wildfires in the last week, with more expected this weekend because of the forecasted conditions. And today was the first game for the Badgers. Andrew Banster is here to tell us more on the first day of a new era for the Badgers. Yeah, Jalen, nine months after hiring Luke Fickle, nine months of anticipation, speculation, and excitement, a new era of Wisconsin football finally kicked off at Camp Randall today as the Badgers hosted Buffalo at 2.30. Fickle just looks right in that Badger red. Camp Randall was going crazy. First quarter, still scoreless, and Ches Malusi changes that in a hurry. The senior back plows through the Bulls line for the first touchdown of the Luke Fickle era. And then in the second quarter, game's tied at seven apiece and Tanner Mordecai shows off that air raid offense. He fires a dart to Chimray DK right on the money for another score. The Badgers roll the season opener, winning it 38 to 17, but there's still some things to clean up. All in all, Luke Fickle, though, likes what he sees. Number one objective is win a ball game, and we won a ball game today. It wasn't uh, exactly maybe the way we envisioned. They asked me afterwards, is this, you know, what were your expectations? And sometimes I think maybe I have a... Uh, delusional expectations um, you know but that's what's going to continue to drive us and motivate us and um, we know there's a lot of ways that we're going to get better and we need to get better the badgers hit the road to play washington state next week before returning home on september 16th two weeks from now to host georgia southern we'll have much more on the badgers season opening win coming up next in sports all right well sounds good and fans celebrated the start of the new season at badger tailgates across madison this morning but at one tailgate, Badger fans are celebrating something else, love. Brayden Ross has more. Meet diehard Badger fan, Melissa Hauglin. She has never missed a Badger game. She and her crew were the first tailgaters in the Edgewood parking lot Saturday morning. Go Badger! Go Badger! They started setting up bright and early. That's 8 a.m. sharp. But you can't party all day if you don't start in the morning. A 13-year season ticket holder. At this point, she's a tailgate pro. I like it better when you put on your own. It's more work, but like it's catered to you and tailored to you, which yeah. is really great. <laughs> Little does she know, this isn't her usual tailgate. <laughs> this is Melissa's boyfriend, Charles Bellin, and he's got some tricks up his sleeve for the first tailgate of the season. It's been something that we've, uh, I've been thinking about for a while, and I'm glad it's looking like it's going to come to fruition. Charles is a former Badger himself. Yeah, here I was, a guy who didn't even know I would make it to college, let alone get a scholarship and also be a team captain. He played on Barry Alvarez's offensive line in the early 90s and was later drafted by the Rams in 1993. It was living a dream, you know, who knew from, a, you know, little old Milwaukee, Wisconsin to there 
at, at Los Angeles, California, playing for the Rams. But when a knee injury set that dream to the side, his Badger roots brought him back home. I always made home Madison, and even when I was on the team, I always, always come back home and just commute for the season and come back home. Two years ago, he met Melissa at a tailgate in this very spot. So it's a great tradition, and it's something that, as a player, obviously I never got to enjoy. He tagged along to the game, and by halftime, he was in love. I was really taken with how deeply she is into her Badgers. So what better place to get down on one knee than the spot where it all started? <laughs> anything at all. I can't believe Bucky came to our tailgate. You gotta love it. Now, there's only one thing that can make this day better. A Badger win. We'll have a win, and we're not hoping. We're gonna have a win. Reporting in Madison, Braden Ross, News 3 Now. And that, and that's exactly what they did today. And if you're around the Capitol Square before the Badger game, you might have seen some food carts and vendors getting up for Madison tradition. Taste of Madison is a free nonprofit event that is going through the weekend to celebrate local cuisine. The event features over 80 local food vendors and entertainment throughout the day. As a nonprofit event, they take donations which go to benefit different organizations like the River Food Pantry. I love being able to hear all the different languages and to be able to see all the different ethnicities that Taste of Madison is representing. This is why I am from Wisconsin. I moved away and I moved back. Taste of Madison runs through the weekend, so if you miss out on the fun because of the game today, don't worry, you can still go tomorrow between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. A side effect of all the cows scattered across the dairy land is an abundant supply of cow chips. So of course, why not put those to good use and have some lighthearted competition? The annual Wisconsin State Cow Chip Throw and Festival hit Prairie to Sock today. Chip chuckers took to the grass to launch cow chips as far as they could. The dried flat chips were primed for tossing with no gloves allowed. Organizers are looking forward to a big anniversary next year. Maybe next year if we could get a few more volunteers, it's going to be our 50th anniversary next year. So we might do a bigger thing and maybe go into the evenings and stuff. The festival featured a large arts and crafts fair with over 125 exhibits of local artists from the community. There were also some unique entertainment acts like a tightrope. Singer and songwriter Jimmy Buffett is dying at the age of 76. The man behind Margaritaville had a career that spanned more than 50 years. Bradley Blackburn takes a look at his life in music. It's a rare singer whose sound sums up an entire way of life. And Jimmy Buffett's music inspired millions. Hey, I wonder where they all disappeared. A statement on his website said Buffett passed away peacefully, surrounded by his family, friends, music, and dogs. He lived his life like a song till the very last breath. Buffett was born in Mississippi and raised in Alabama along the Gulf Coast. 2017, he told CBS Sunday Morning how he got his start singing on the streets of New Orleans. Do you think there would be a Jimmy Buffett if there wasn't a New Orleans? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> I don't think there ever would have been. I mean, uh, those years being here really were formative years for me. Buffett performed on more than 50 albums, but it was his song Margaritaville that first really struck a chord. Released in 1977, it was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2016, and it launched an empire of restaurants, developments, and resorts that stretch from Key West to the island of Manhattan. Forbes estimated his net worth at more than a billion dollars. Strange things happen, but I'm, I'm glad, as I said, it's been a pretty good song. <laughs> <laughs> Buffett's fans called Parrot Heads followed his tours coast to coast. It's all about fun and friends and good times. A songwriter who knew how to enjoy life and helped so many others enjoy it too. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. A life well lived. Buffett's cause of death hasn't been released, but he was forced to reschedule some concerts in May due to an undisclosed illness. And there's more to come at 10. President Biden is surveying the damage caused by Hurricane Adalia in Florida, where some 
communities are still picking up the pieces after the devastation. Plus an update on the case of multiple white men who were accused of beating a black man on a dock over a boat parking spot. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. President Biden is in Hurricane Ravage, Florida today, where some seaside communities are still picking up the pieces following Hurricane Adalia. CBS News correspondent Christian Benavidez reports from Miami. President Biden in Florida Saturday getting a look at the damage Hurricane Adalia left behind, taking an aerial tour of the disaster zone while also meeting with federal personnel, local officials and first responders. No winds this strong had hit this area in 100 years. Pray God it'll be another 100 years before this happens again. I want to thank the senator. Florida's Republican Senator Rick Scott was there to greet him. Noticeably absent from the visit, Florida governor and presidential candidate Ron DeSantis, who instead spent his day distributing food in a different location. He did this take a call from yes, Mr. Biden yes, earlier Hello. in the week. Okay, yeah, yeah. well, we'll, um, we'll I'll, I'll tell Deanne, you know, a, a place that it would make sense to do it. Um, we're, we're in Horseshoe Beach now, it's pretty rough here. Um, and there's a lot of folks putting stuff together, but um, we will uh, we'll let her know. The president's visit comes as we are seeing more images of the devastation in communities along Florida's Big Bend region, where entire structures were wiped off the map. Along Idalia's path, tens of thousands of customers remain without power, and some may be without it for weeks. It's the worst storm we've ever been through. And... Um, and we're going to rebuild. Uh, it'll never be the same. Or she'll never be the same for me, you know. But we'll rebuild and uh, build. Hopefully, uh, be ready for the next one that comes. In Georgia, where the storm lingered, communities are left rebuilding as well. Now, Governor Brian Kemp has requested West federal West aid. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Miami. One person was killed during the storm in Georgia. And two traffic-related deaths in Florida also happened as the storm was over Florida. Now let's get a look at your first worn forecast with Alex Harrington. Yeah, Jalen and friends, we're heading into toasty times here across southern Wisconsin. Enter the red glasses, alert day conditions to match here for all of southern Wisconsin. We're, we're looking at high heat values, high heat index values, and the possibility even of wildfire conditions, especially on your Sunday evening going into your Sunday afternoon, I should say as well. This is our fire weather watch across much of south central Wisconsin, central Wisconsin, and southwestern Wisconsin for the combination of low relative humidity out out there. Very, very high temperatures. We'll see those in just a moment. Breezy conditions and with the drought and relatively dry vegetation, it takes just a little spark to get a wildfire going across the area. So if you do need to be outside in the extreme heat conditions heading into the area, if you're going to be doing any bonfires or any cooking outside, Please be vigilant, folks, as those fire conditions will be uh, quite prevalent on your Sunday. Uh, we also have heat advisories out to the west across areas towards the Mississippi River for those heat index values starting to inch up closer to 100 out there. Let's do a little bit of a history check here. Look at our record high temperatures and record high low temperatures. 96 on your Sunday. We're going to be really, really close to that. 95 on your Monday. So our high temperatures in the middle 90s are going to eclipse our records as we head out towards the Labor Day time frame. Look at these low temperatures in the upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. That's very close to record high low temperatures, meaning when those temperatures don't get very, very warm at night, that doesn't give your body enough of a chance to really cool down out there, folks. Look at this here at 10 o'clock or just shortly. After 10 o'clock, temperatures still up near 80 degrees in Madison. Our friends off towards the north and west towards La Crosse still hanging on in approaching the middle 80s. And remember, this is 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night here, folks. Temperatures right around 80 degrees across Dane County proper. And as we carry on through your Saturday overnight and to start your Sunday, temperatures right around 70 degrees, folks, to start your day. This is what we're up against on your Sunday. Highs in the middle to upper 90s. So it puts us in that category with the heat index values 
approaching 100 degrees, but at least it's not as high as what we were observing just a couple of weeks ago. This is where we're going to see our temperatures and our heat index values meet middle to upper 90s, actual air temperatures in the mid to upper 90s as well. Again, the humidity values are not going to be quite as high on your Sunday, but they will start to inch up. But Jalen and friends, this is what our friends in Sauk City are doing. All you got to do is hitch a pool to the back of a <laughs> lawnmower here and hop in and you're good to go. Look at that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's how you cool off of this. First warrant at WISCTV.com and our 7 to 10 day forecast here. The heat wave will break by the time we get towards that Wednesday time frame. But even the temperatures as we head out towards next weekend, that's actually at or slightly above normal. So we're mm. not really getting really cool after this heat wave. But cooler than what we're seeing right now. But that quick question. True. Yeah. If you had to guess, do you think that the kids came up with the idea of the the mobile pool there? Or was it the parents? I suspect it might be a mix of both. Parents, let's get the kids outside, keep them cool, and the kids, how can we do it fun? <laughs> I, I think it was just all the kids. That seems something <laughs> that a bunch of siblings got together and, and hatched and were like, yeah, we're going to stay cool, mom and dad. This is what we're going to do. And they were like, all right, guys. Have what, at it. <laughs> whatever it takes, right? But feel free to submit your photos. Mm -hmm. We love for you guys at home to be a part of our newscast. But all right, thank you, Alex. You all five suspects in the Montgomery, Alabama Riverfront brawl have been enter have entered pleas of not guilty. According to court records, Mary Todd and Richard Roberts were the only ones who appeared in court. Todd is charged with third degree assault and Roberts is charged with two counts of third degree assault. Zachary Shipman, Alan Todd and Reggie Ray all waived their court appearances. Shipman and Todd are both charged with third degree assault. Ray is charged with disorderly conduct and a trial has been set for all five on September 26th. The fight between the white men and a black riverboat co-captain stemmed from a dispute over a dockside parking spot and quickly escalated into a brawl. A witness said a racial slur was used, but police say investigators looked into whether there was enough evidence to charge for a hate crime and the actions could not meet the criteria. Pope Francis was in Mongolia today and gave a speech trying to calm the fears of countries who see the church as a possible threat. Pope Francis said that governments and secular institutions have nothing to fear from the church's work of evangelization. The Pope went on to say the church has no political agenda to advance, but is sustained by the quiet power of God's grace and a message of mercy and truth, which is meant to promote the good of all. Also during his visit to Mongolia, a country which borders both Russia and China, Pope Francis called on leaders to dispel the dark clouds of war. Can AI help with CPR? And doctors are having success with a new type of COVID vaccine. Michael George has a look at some of this week's top health stories. A new DNA-based vaccine is proving effective against COVID-19. That's the finding of a study by the Texas Biomedical Research Institute. The analysis shows when used on mice, the vaccine boosts the immune response to COVID-19. Unlike the existing mRNA vaccines, DNA vaccines are stable at room temperature, making them easier to store. Boys who smoke in their early teens could be doing damage to their future unborn children. Researchers looked at 875 people between the ages of 7 to 50 and the smoking behaviors of their fathers. In children with dads who smoked before the age of 15, they found key changes linked to asthma, obesity, and low lung function. Scientists say the findings show interventions for young people could help protect not just them, but also future generations. And your voice assistant device like Alexa or Siri might be helpful with daily tasks, but a new study out of Mass General Brigham found it could be a different story if you need to administer CPR. Researchers asked four different voice assistants eight questions about the emergency procedure, but were mainly given unrelated and inconsistent responses. Doctors said the findings show if you need help administering CPR, call emergency services. That's a look at some of the week's top health stories. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Still come, the Badgers opened up their highly anticipated football season against Buffalo. Andrew's got full highlights, and that's next in sports. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. 
This week's High V Hot Deals are ground beef, $2.99 for a one pound roll, select Pepsi products, $3.75 each when you buy four, and Lay's Kettle Cooked or Munchies, $1.99 each when you buy three. Only at High V. That nonstop pain in your joints. Let's get real. You've been putting up with this because you can't stand the thought of joint replacement or surgery. I get it, and so does QC Kinetics. Their highly skilled medical professionals deliver relief to aching hips, shoulders, back, and knees. QC Kinetics uses all natural biologics and healing properties to tackle your pain. No joint replacements, no surgeries. So what are you waiting for? Call QC Kinetics today, and let's get you some relief. Toyota's national sales event is on. Make the most of summer with a new Toyota. We want the great Tacoma. Great Tacoma coming in hot. On it. Highlander Hybrid. Highlander Hybrid on the double hang. Here we go. That Red Rav 4. Run a Red Rav 4. Hit the deck. Now that's how you holler. Get 3.99% APR for 48 months on a new Toyota Corolla, Camry, Rav 4, BZ4X, Highlander, or Tacoma. See your local Toyota dealer or visit toyota.com to learn more. Come in today. Toyota. Let's go places. I was just a kid when I first went with my dad on a job. I was replacing windows back when long hair was in. And by the time I took over for my dad, I had a little bit less on my head and a lot more on my face. Look at that stash. <laughs> wow. I'm Scott the Window Guy from AHT Wisconsin Windows. The times sure have changed, but our quality hasn't. Buy seven windows by the end of the month and get the eighth free at scottthewindowguy.com. Did Scott the Window Guy wear a powder blue tux to his wedding? You bet your glassy did. One night, four huge events. The Bulls, Bands, and Barrels Tour invades the Alliant Energy Center on Saturday, September 16th, featuring bull riding, barrel racing, ultimate bullfighting, with a live performance by Riley Green. There was this girl holding my With special guest, Sam Barber. Get tickets and information at BullsBandsAndBarrels.com and the Alliant Energy Center box office. The Bulls, Bands, and Barrels Tour, Saturday, September 16th at 7 p.m. at the Alliant Energy Center. It's here. Wisconsin's newest and most exclusive sports show. Wisconsin Huddle. It's more than just highlights. It's more than X's and O's. It's a dynamic 30-minute weekly special produced for the die-hard fans of Wisconsin Athletics. Embark on an exclusive journey into the lives of some of UW's top athletes as we offer an inside look into their world. Watch Wisconsin Huddle Friday nights at 6.30. Brought to you by Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. It's hy vs Labor Day weekend sale this Friday through Sunday. Whole beef brisket, just $2.88 a pound. Six-pack Coke products, just $2.88. And buy one, get one free on Edie's Ice Cream, only at hy V. For nearly a year, we wondered what would the new look Badgers look like under Luke Fickle, and most assumed it would be dramatically different. But it really wasn't. If you boil down today's season opener, it was hard-nosed football anchored by the ground game. Sound familiar? It starts with Ches Malusi, half of the Badgers' two-headed monster, reared its ugly head early. Malusi, the senior back, pounds it in for the first touchdown of the Luke Fickle era. And that running game was just getting started. Third quarter, Badgers up four, and look at Malusi again, dodging tacklers, beating about every bull on the field, gets all the way to the 40. How about this? Maybe one of the best plays of the day in college football is this 89-yard house call from Ches Malusi, how about it? And then Braylon Allen, the Badgers had already ran away with it at this point. He has to get his turn. Agent Zero breaks a tackle, bounces out to the right, and he's off to the races. Allen seals the deal for UW. The onslaught of rushing overwhelmed Buffalo, leading to a Badgers whomping. Wisconsin wins the first game of the Luke Fickle era, 38-17. Our Zach Hanley was at Camp Randall today and has the story of how UW dominated the ground game in a familiar way. Heading into Saturday, Luke Fickle said he knew Wisconsin was going to be able to run the ball, and boy did they ever. Braylon Allen and Ches Malusi combined for 298 yards and four touchdowns to will the new look Badgers to a win. For our view at the end of the day, um, the, the offense, regardless of you know what type of philosophy it is, or you know what the title of it is. It's, it's going to go through the backs. Um, you know, Coach Spalding always says we're the adjusters of this offense. We felt really good about our backs. You know, it felt like uh, Braylon and Chez were were fresh, excited. You know, really get out there and run again. And uh, 
show what they can do in this new offense. And I thought today they did a great job of doing that. I mean, I see those guys every day. Um, you know, they're some of the most dynamic players, uh, not only on this team, but um, in the conference and in the country. So uh, for them to be able to be the players they are and our whole line to be able to block the way they did today, I think it's huge for our offense. It makes us, you know, really dynamic and hard to guard. After the game, Luke Fickle described his two-headed rushing attack not as a 1-2 punch, but a 1-1 one, one punch. And number one and number zero got the Badgers to want to know. At Camp Randall Stadium, Zach Hanley, News 3 Sports. Elsewhere in Wisconsin, the Brewers were back in action tonight, hosting the Phillies' bottom five. Crew were up 3-2, and there goes Carlos Santana. The trade deadline acquisition extends to an 11-game hit streak, and the crew keep it rolling. Milwaukee wins it 7-5 the final. But that kind of buries the lead a bit, a little bit. I mean, yeah, how about that Wisconsin game? Oh, yeah. I mean, we talked about the two running backs and Tana Mordecai, you know, the passing game, they're, they're getting the kinks out, but I think they're going to be good once the season gets rolling. Yeah, and I think people were understandably, I don't know if confused is the right word, but people were so excited to see something right. they thought it was going to be completely different. And, yeah. you know, Luke Fickle was pretty transparent from the start. They're still going to run the ball. I think we expected that a little bit more today, but... Right. Probably throughout the season, we'll see more of that. But as Coach Fickle said, W is a W. It sure is. All right, well, thanks, Andrew. And we have one final check of your first one forecast coming up when we return. At Berkshire Automotive, we have a non-commissioned sales team, which is a play way to say we don't really care whether you buy a practical Equinox, the rugged Silverado, or the speedy new Corvette. You've been told no before. Join the Berkshire Automotive family for the yes. Look, Mom, I found one. Oh, yeah, you did, but we need an ATM from our bank, unless you want to spend a small fortune in fees. <laughs> no, thank you. Banking with BMO means more fee-free ATMs than the two largest U.S. banks combined, including places like pharmacies and grocery stores. Saving money and more convenient. <laughs> Look at you being so helpful. What'd you expect? You're standing at a help stop. That's you. <laughs> That's me, at a desk. When a bank helps you get and stay ahead, that's the BMO effect. Whether you're working hard or hardly working, it's time to get a better night's sleep. And during the four-day Super Labor Day sale at Denver Mattress, the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend. Get up to $900 off adjustable purple mattress sets. Or check out the Summit, now only $299.99. Save up to $700 on Tempur-Pedic adjustable mattress sets and score a $300 gift. Plus, six years no interest and free shipping. But hurry, the four-day Super Labor Day sale at Denver Mattress ends Monday. Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Labor Day sale is going on now, featuring unbeatable deals on fall essentials for your home, work, and vehicles. Like all Skechers footwear, buy one, get one half price. Save 20% on Carhartt denim pants for the whole family. And these Blaine's brand candies, three for six bucks. Plus, when your car's in the shop, get 10% off in-store purchases with $100 or more spent on tire and auto service. Tires and batteries, trust and care. A Blaine's Farm and Fleet promise since 1955. Right now with Papa Murphy's, we've got a great deal. Which means I make more great pizza. A lot more. That's our extra large New York style take and bake pizza. And it's everything you'd expect from a classic New York style pizza, hot and fresh out of your oven. And only $9.99. Do I have to share it? It's recommended, but not required. Papa Murphy's, we make great pizza, so you can make the pizza great. Such a great deal. Order now at papamurphys.com. You know, people always ask me, Kevin, what does being a CEO of cash backing mean to you? It means cash backing every opportunity. Could you cash back on this? Like I wouldn't cash back. Cash backing by the basket, I see you. Oh, I dreamt you didn't cash back this flight. Oh, good. If you're buying it, flying it, or whining and dining it, then you gotta be cash backing. <laughs> Come on now. Cash back on everything you buy with Chase Freedom Unlimited with no annual fee. How do you cash back? Chase, make more of a yours. At Bergstrom Automotive, we're so serious about saying yes to your trade-in, we challenge you to bring us a no. We accept crazy things like old cowboy boots and an old office chair. Even that old junkie you didn't think would make it to the parking lot. Join the Bergstrom Automotive family for the yes. The first warm weather team takes you beyond the barometer. Only on News 3 Now. Man, it was a it was a hot one today, but you were the one that was actually out. Yeah, the I, the I was. Game. You know, I got a little bit of sunburn, but we're gonna call that my Badger red that I'm wearing today. <laughs> cool, so cool. I said to Alex earlier, but uh, it was hot. I can I, I can't give you the full weather. I can tell you it was hot and All sunny. Right.
Well, can you give us one last piece of the weather before we head out? You bet. All we got to do is look at what the Lewis family are doing. Just hop in the back of a <laughs> little tractor and uh, get in the pool. Sounds good. Thank you guys for joining us.